Heidi F exclamation point with frame generation technology becoming more common do you foresee an eventual end to VRR displays virtual reality headsets already avoid them due to motion sickness and it seems like a lot of complexity to keep around when you could just fill in extra frames at the source interesting question there I mean you know when we were um, I think I've mentioned this before when we were at AMD and for Gamescom you know they did seem to indicate that the end game for frame generation technology is just that it would match the sample rate the refresh rate of your monitor and just you know automatically give very smooth motion I think from my perspective just the, the, the presence of frame generation it's not always going to be a feature that you will want to use right you should or have always to. available yeah the, the point is that pc is supposed to give you options additional options and not take options away and i don't think vrr is going anywhere anytime soon and of course there are additional things of course like um you know let's say you've got a 300 hertz display but you know frame generation kind of looks best at 150 or 160 you know or a clean multiple of 60 to match like you know full motion video that sort of thing um, there's a lot of use case scenarios where using the two together actually makes a lot of sense. Um, but what do you make of this, John? Particularly this thing about VR headsets uh, avoiding. So I just, I think he's missed the reason for why they might specify motion sickness. It's actually, I think, not due to motion sickness. It's because to solve this problem, they have to do ultra low persistence display techniques, which is basically like pulsing, strobing, black frame insertion kind of thing right which until this new g-sync pulsar i think it was called yeah that nvidia revealed there wasn't really an effective way to combine vrr with uh that low persistence sort of update yeah and in vr that would be great to combine those because there are plenty of games like uh on the quest for instance even on psvr and any other platform really where the frame rate is not consistently hitting that target refresh rate uh, and being able to handle that with VRR would be excellent if you could combine it with the low persistence stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're making a VR headset, it's better to go for low persistence, no blur versus VRR. But if you could have both, that would be optimal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oliver, anything to add? Uh, I think in a final sense, you probably it probably would be quite nice to just have a fixed panel refresh rate and a, and a fixed... Uh, display for me on the, on the console or the PC. I think I think in part VRR is an artifact of the fact that we have finite hardware power, which is maybe a problem that won't ever go away, but it is mm. it is a solution for that in, in much the same way that dynamic resolution is often a solution for that problem in console games. But to me, frame generation just feels like a different trade-off in terms of quality for displays with variable backlight, with dimming zones, with BFI, for sure getting away from var variable refresh helps out those technologies. 